First night, guys, we did it. What a fantastic oh. viper. Harry just yeah. dived into the pond. Yes, yes. Nothing but flights. Nothing but flights. Mass compliance event is happening here. Here we are, second flight of the day. Haven't been updating much because I'm surviving off the limited amount of sleep, but we're leaving Manila and heading south. I'll uh, catch up when we arrive. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to Ch Oh, I can't even speak now. Okay. Welcome to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Palawan. That's I where we are. Right. Don't listen to these guys. They've got some kind of special needs, all right? But look at that storm behind me. We're back in the tropics. And we're going to take it easy this afternoon because we've got clothes washing to do, a lot of errands to run. We are incredibly tired. We slept like three hours last night. What the hell is going on? Jolly B. I can barely speak. And also, yeah, Jolly B. But uh, I'll catch up with you guys when we get out herping tonight. Oh, right, it is time to head out. We are going rogue tonight, checking out spots we have no idea about, just places I scouted out on Google Maps, and we'll see if we have any success. We're incredibly tired tonight, so it's not gonna be a long one, but I sense that Keith's uh, caffeinated and still, ready to go. Still caffeinated from six hours ago, so we might have to top up. Okay, we'll, we'll see. Keep it, boys. All right, our time in Palawan is off to a start earlier than expected. We stopped the car to check out a DOR. It was Cologmaphis philippensis. And I just showed my light to the edge of the road and there was this sleeping Dendrolaphis. This one's Leverton eye, right? Which is similar to Cordoliniatus. You see on the tail, it's got the stripes, but on the upper body, it's kind of a, more like a Pictus or Subocularis hybrid. It's actually really pretty overall. Got some nice oranges on the back of the head and yeah, sorry about the noise, guys. There's like a lot of traffic. It's quite a busy road, hence the DOR. But uh, yeah, we're only just on the outskirts of town now and already got a snake. These are pretty common here from uh, the INAT records and so forth, but certainly a species we're happy to see just out here in some kind of agriculturally mangrovey type vegetation. Cool. All right, we arrived at our spot and it's absolutely pissing with rain. So this is probably going to be one of the very few video updates tonight unless we find something because my phone's already getting soaking wet. We're only here for four nights. Uh, nobody likes rain, but screw it. We're gonna get out, see what's active. Already got one snake tonight. See if we can rack up some more. All right, we're into the jungle now, which is gonna make things a little bit easier for me to film. There's some canopy blocking the rain from just pounding down. Habitat's looking good. I'm uh, impressed by what I see. Gonna get focused, see what we can turn up. All right, just got this Megophrys. Uh, kind of a short snout, but really, really pointy horns on the top of its head. I thought it was Nasuta at first, but of course it's lacking the elongated nose. It looks like he just went in the water. But yeah, really cute. Aiden spotted this guy just chilling on a rock and uh, first properly cool frog of our time here. Woo! First night, guys, we did it. Me and Aiden, we powered up this riverbed. Didn't see a single snake. We just went up the steepest waterfall and do you guys see what's hiding behind there? You see that little green round there? Oh, whoa, I almost fell. Let me take you round and show you what's hanging out here. Do you see that, guys? Number one target of this entire area on the first night, a sub-adult Trimurisurus shot cyber. Oh man, hold on, hold on. My phone screen's so wet, I can't click focus points. Uh, let me try and use this finger. Uh, yeah, there you go. So much patterning on it at this size. Very happy to see that. Unlike Sumatranus and Malcomai, which barely have any, this guy is looking absolutely fantastic there. Look at that. Aiden's on his way over. Let's, let's continue to observe this fantastic, beautiful viper. Oh, wow. I'm so happy to see this. I was just telling Aiden a couple minutes ago when we found that horn frog that the habitat looked beyond perfect. I think I found the best spot and sure enough. Do you see it? I just spotted it through the, through here. Nice. Come around and check out how pretty it is. It's a sub adult, but it's so banded. You can go it's take a closer look. Go as close as you want. Look at the patterning on the head. Holy fuck, that thing's gorgeous. 
Yeah, Simultronus and, and Malcomite juveniles have like no patterning. I'm so glad this one is like actually strongly banded. All right, so it came to life and now it's raised its head and we can get a much like better look at this absolutely stunning specimen. What focus are we working with here? Probably none at all. Uh, there we go, now we're focused. I don't know how well you can hear me, but when I turn the brightness down, the exposure down, you can really see the black markings all over the snake. I don't think there's any need for me to get it down actually for videos. I think we're getting a perfect look here. And we're gonna, we got, and we got several more days here to look for a big adult. So this is just the beginning. First night arriving here, pouring of rain, and this guy's sheltering under these plants here. Keeping himself dry, looking absolutely exquisite. What a fantastic viper, so happy with this. Yeah, one thing we didn't mention, uh, didn't even really notice, is it does have a meal smack in the middle of its belly there. Uh, so it's probably fed on some kind of frog, I would guess, around this habitat. And uh, that would make the most sense. Great to know, we, we came into this not knowing really anything about their ecology. A friend told me that they like mature forests, so I scoped out some accessible areas of good forest and just basically went under the guidance that we've used with all other pit vipers, Trimocerus in Southeast Asia. So, and it worked out, so great for that. All right, so post short sign number one, the uh, rain's completely gone now. I can see stars in the sky and we're gonna continue up for a bit longer because we've lost Keith, so we can't go on forever. We'll see if we can rustle anything up tonight. Weather's not great for snakes in general. I would have expected really mostly it just to be vipers out, which works perfectly for us, but it'd be nice to see some other stuff. And of course, new target. So we shifted to the target being a big adult instead of just any shulzai, which is what you've got to start with. And now I've got to focus on getting over here. So I'll catch up with you guys when we next find something. Oh, I almost fell. Aiden just caught this uh, nice uh, gecko. I doubt it's the same one that we saw on Patanas. I highly doubt that in fact, but it's quite similar you see with the green eyes, very sort of plain dorsal coloration. It was just cruising along, a, it was just on a rock on the edge of the stream, wasn't it? Exactly that, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see you catching it from a distance. <laughs> but yeah, another nice reptile tonight, another new one for the trip I suspect. And uh, again, ID will be on screen. All right, Aiden and I have spotted something up on the trail, glowing bright green. You guys see it? Hello, <laughs> another trip juvenile shall say, this time also with a meal in its stomach. I promise you guys, this is not a uh, staged snake. This is not the same one we just found put in a new spot. Oh God, my, uh, my, my, my lens is so bad right now. This one's uh, quite a bit smaller than the other one. Is it actually? Eh, only minorly actually. Yeah, it is smaller. Part of the same, like they hatched out around the same time, but still really, really colorful. I, it's got a, a same size meal in like the same size part of the body. Like, I promise you guys, this is a different snake. <laughs> You'll probably be able to compare and see that it's got different patterning on the head or something. But yeah, very, very happy and vindicated to know we've chosen the right spot. And if there's juvies around, that means there's gonna be a big girl as well. Yeah, Aiden just showed you the size. I'm not gonna spend too long gazing at this one because it's very similar to the last. But uh, yeah, I'll take a few phone photos and just admire this with my own eyes rather than through a camera for a moment because it's always important to remember to do that when you find these snakes, you know? As someone, who's me, uh, as someone like me who's a bit of a content creator, you know, photographer, YouTuber, what have you, it's easy just to look at snakes the whole time through a lens, but yeah, very happy to turn up here first night and get a couple of our main target. Let's go. All right, Aiden and I are going to leave this one exactly as found. Never touched it. Just took a few photos, pictures, very similar to the other one. So no need to get the camera gear out. Just going to continue heading through this beautiful, beautiful habitat. Okay, Aiden and I headed down the stream after that second shot sign and caught up with Keith, who uh, had been hanging out down the lower part of the stream and managed to catch this Apistotropis. So another cool species, which we knew was on the island and uh, we're really hoping to see. He caught it swimming in the water very typical of this genus. And believe it or not, this is actually the first member of the Epistotropus genus I've ever seen. These occur in Thailand, um, in south southeastern China, parts of Indochina, and in Borneo and Philippines, where we are now. And it took until this trip here for me to catch my first one, but it's crazy how rough the scales are. And I'm not holding it at all. This snake is holding me. It's tightly wrapped around me, not letting me go whatsoever. Very strange technique it's employing here. Not really helping it escape since it easily could if it wanted to right now. But yeah, other than that, it's a pretty bland animal. Um, those rough scales are super, super cool. 
but it's got a dark gray dorsum, a very faint yellow stripe on the side and a plain venter. So yeah, far from the most interesting snake in the world. And yeah, very, very happy to see this. I was so glad that Keith caught a snake that wasn't Shulzai, you know? I was really hoping, because we only got Shulzai, me and Aiden, that he would have something else. And indeed he did. He came through with the goods with this uh, very difficult to film a Pistotrophus. All right, another reptile for the night is this uh, Cyclemis, let's say. <coughs> oh, it's fly in my mouth. Oh, Cyclemis dentata. Uh, the other guy said they saw a couple of these, but this is the only one they showed us. It's got a cool, like, kind of serrated back of the shell. Um, I'm not a big turtle guy, but I know a lot of people that watch my channel are, are big fans of turtles, so I figured I'd show this one. And he's not willing to come out of his shell, so that is all you're going to see, his little nose poking through there. All right, here's a nice Certidactylus species which Harry rustled up in the jungle here, adding to an ever-growing list of reptiles for the night. Um, things are turning out quite good considering we only spent two hours searching tonight. This beautiful one is very similar to Certidactylus consabrinus. Oh, and there's a jumping spider about to touch it. I wonder if it'll move. But yeah, I just got him sitting perfectly here, so I'm gonna grab a couple snaps and we'll let it go back, but not a small gecko by any means. Really, really cool cert here. Okay, night numero dos. We took today to catch up with some much needed rest, catch up on sleep, whatnot, catch up on some work. And now we're gonna head out into the field. You can see the guys getting ready in the background. Six people, not the highest energy levels, but I'm sure they're gonna pick up as we get out and see hopefully some new stuff, some more stuff than yesterday. Yesterday was fantastic, but let's get back out there, see what turns up. Let's go. Rice burger. Let's go. Can't post that on YouTube. <laughs> all right here we are getting ready to go there is uh, no rain tonight but maybe there's some predicted i'm not sure we've got all six men here about to attack the forest looking for snakes and other animals but mostly snakes <laughs> let's get to it so there's two things around this pool i don't know how many of you can see you can see these Pull Quran and Mullendorf are hanging out here. And just in there, let me try and not get my boot too soggy. It's this right here. Uh, probably another Cyclemis dentata, if I had to guess. Oh yeah, thanks for that. Looks very similar to the turtle we saw last night. This is the first big one I've seen. Oh, oh, no. Oh, turtle smells so bad. This is why I hate picking them up. They're stinky boys, by the way. And uh, I'm just laying down this rock for a little iPhone photo, a little more video before we carry on up the trail. Oh, he's coming out. Hey, buddy. What's up? You've got nice blue eyes, it seems. <laughs> Habitat here is just simply awesome. Look at this. Fantastic mature forest. Can't wait to see what we turn up tonight. So I just found some egg sacs from what I presume is a frog. I've never actually seen them like this before in Southeast Asia. That's absolutely fascinating, seeing those little balls. Crazy. So I've got this nice tree frog here, just plucked him from a branch. First one of this genus we've seen actually while here on Palawan. And uh, nice to see a kind of tropical tree frog around here after those uh, insane egg sacs we saw before. That was crazy. All right, so we've gone up even further than Aiden and I did last night. Didn't see anything. And now we actually got two snakes, literally back to back. These guys spotted, uh, where is? Where are we looking? Ah, yeah, they got Schultz eye here. Let me go up and take a look. New individual. Yeah, new individual and actually possibly a little bit larger. Could you mind turning your light off? Sorry. Who spotted this? Alex did. All right, all right, Alex got this uh, slightly, like, minorly larger than the ones from last night, Shoals Eye. The banding actually isn't quite as strong on this one as the ones we saw yesterday, so we're certainly going to leave it in situ. But, yeah, I also spotted a different species of snake, a new species for the trip on the other side, and we're going to check it out any minute now. Okay, we left the Shoals Eye that these guys found down there, and we went to see my snake, which, uh, actually, that's kind of weird. I shouldn't say that. But, yeah, you can see a female subannulatus over there. And then when I got here... Suddenly another one showed up. So three snakes to within like yeah, 10, 15 square meters here, crazy. All right, so here's a slightly closer look before we get her down of a uh, sort of young adult female Tropodilamus subannulatus, which uh, in these areas that we'll call the North Philippine Temple Viper, but 
It's got the really Philippines coloration, which is awesome. So we're going to get it down now. Okay, we got her down here and you can really get a good look at this girl, like really cool Philippines coloration, that kind of pale, very pale olivey green with the blue bands. And in particular, I'm fond of that uh, blue stripe on the head. That's a very, very cool adaptation. Not the prettiest Viper by any means, but nice to see one which is different from the Bornean ones, which at this size would just be green with some kind of uh, paler and pink, like and reddish kind of bands on them. So. Yeah, really unique here. It is the same species, this one. There's no uh, South Philippine pit viper here, which is the other one you get in some of the islands. The differences between the two are very hard to tell apart, but uh, looking at the head, I'm pretty sure the scale count this one would indicate that it is Subannulatus, the Philippine version. And she's big too. And uh, if you look from behind, yeah, look at the shape. So she's locked in on me. Look at the shape of that head, guys. That's so cool there. It's heart shaped from here. Put that on a Valentine's card, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get the other one down to momentarily look at, but this is the only one we're going to photograph for sure. But yeah, cool to get another species to add to the list tonight. Another short side within the same small area. Very nice. Let's get it. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so here's the female and there you go. You can see a proper male here. Definitely adult of breeding size. Um, contradictory to what we thought at first. These are probably would have been a breeding pair at some point, judging by how incredibly close they were together. Big female. The male's got blue spots as well, uh, a little bit more green, so kind of similar to the subannulatus we see in Borneo in that regard. And you can see him there. Also with a red stripe on the head as opposed to the, yeah, you can see a direct comparison right here of the female's head. And then we got the side of the male's head here. So yeah, great to see these two new snakes for the night. And we're definitely gonna get the cameras out for these ones. So prepare for an endless photography session. You. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at least tropes are way easier than trims. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I mean, look at them. They're just, they're just sitting here, not moving. That's what you like to see, isn't it? Thank you. The guys are just there looking at that snake and I came over to look at these uh, frogs here. So firstly, we've got some kind of limnonectid ripper frog here, um, decent size one. There was another one hiding down this pocket. And here there was a few of these before, but some of them jumped away, but a nice, uh, Polypodates genus frog here. Doesn't, doesn't look like Lucemistex at all. I highly doubt it is. Uh, first time seeing this one as well. I'm guessing that's what laid the egg sacs we've been seeing, like the typical white egg sacs would make sense for this one here. But yeah, this area really, really biodiverse. With this like pond here, the big river just next to there and just some really mature forests. Like this is fantastic. I'm expecting more snakes ASAP. Dude, I wish I got that on camera. I was pointing out a frog to Harry and while we were doing that, I spotted a tiny snake come up to the surface. It swam to the bottom and Harry just dived into the pond, like completely submerged himself. It's another Epistotrophus typica, uh, same species we got last night, except this time it's like a hatchling size. Oh, Harry smells even fucking worse than he That's not me, that's the pond. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no. But I am now covered in it, so. God damn. I'll go wash off in the river for you. This is cute though, this one. Wow. Not as pretty as the adult, which is saying something, considering the adult was one of the ugliest snakes I've ever seen. <laughs> this was like the biggest demonstration of the theory that when you find a snake, scan the rest of the area because wildlife just gathers around in the forest and a habitat like this is just absolute perfection for all manner of species. And species attract species. So yeah, this was crazy just finding snake after snake after frog, frog, boom, boom, boom. To further exemplify how good this spot is, there's also these breeding limnonectids on the edge here. So, so many breeding frogs, snakes hanging around everywhere. I wonder if there's anything else. I'm gonna keep scanning. For the millions of people watching and wondering, yes, there are leeches here. It is tropical forest. And he is one of my favorite buddies. Look at him. What a cool animal. All right, our stream eventually ended in two big waterfalls. So we're heading back down now, and then we'll do a bit more hunting once we get back to the beginning uh, along the road or something. But let's see if anything shows up on the way back. All right, on the way back down the stream, and Harry just gave the call which we've all been waiting for. There we go, I see it. Adult Trimurosaurus Schultzai sat up there in the tree looking absolutely fantastic. Let's go. Very nice. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I just blinded you. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, guys. Schultz's Pit Viper was our main target on Palawan, but in reality, this was our main target. Not the little ones we saw before. A nice big adult 
female we believe this one is. It's got a quite a uh, dramatic taper on the tail, on the head size, you guys can see that there. Head is absolutely enormous in comparison to its body, which is quite typical trait of female vipers. Um, at least if we go by other members of the Pariahs group. It's not like a uh, particularly banded, but it's certainly absolutely exquisite. Like I mentioned it before, look at the yellows on the side of the head there. The yellows on the side of the head is what really distinguishes this from the juveniles, like to me, as being like the superior snake. And plus like the yellow and blue stripe on the side is so dramatic. It's long too. Like I guess you guys haven't really got a example yet, but you can see my hand next to it there. No small viper. I'm sure they get bigger than this, but it's certainly long. I'd say um, if I had to guess, this one's probably about one meter on the dot. Um, snakes always uh, are longer than they actually appear. But let's just film this for a little while longer. I won't spend ages with it because there's not too much to do. I'm not going to do any handling. Let's just admire the absolute beauty of this very rarely seen snake. When I say rarely seen, I mean, not many people come here to look for these. Not many people see them when they come here. Rumor on the street is that they're rare, but um, we didn't think they were going to be rare. We've had absolutely glorious success targeting vipers in all other locations we've been to in our time herping together, me and these guys. So uh, we are pretty confident we turn these up in good numbers and we're right about that second night and snakes are out and about and we've officially completed our goal, which means we're going to shift our searching method somewhat, try some new areas, less of the stream walking. That's what we knew was going to be really productive for finding this species and yeah. Tonight came through with the goods. Lots of good snakes in the forest tonight, and I have a feeling this won't be the last, so. Very good. Very good. Very nice. Where's Keith, guys? Dead, dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Browning his briefs. Browning his briefs, yeah. That is a very accurate representation of what he's up to. All right, here's what may end up being the last snake of the night. Aiden picked up this juvenile Tropodolamus subannulatus, you guys can see here. If it's a little bit blurry, it's because my, my camera got, I mean, my phone got so much water on it tonight and it just makes it very hard to focus sometimes. But yeah, this one's very typical, unlike the adults. Very, very green with the, uh, you see the pink and, uh, the, sorry, the red and white spots on the dorsum, like the subannulatus you see in Borneo. Pretty standard all round, so not gonna spend much longer this one, but yeah, it's been a great night of herping. Got a couple very, very cool things, including the adult Schultzai and Harry Oak just photographing a frog in the background. Uh, probably won't show it on the channel. It's small and brown. Another frog we picked up along the river walk. This is uh, Nicticsalis pictus, cinnamon frog, very wide ranging frog in the tropics of Southeast Asia. I knew they were here on this island and on some other Philippine islands too, but at least they're pretty. Definitely the prettiest frog we've seen so far and uh, another good addition to a very biodiverse night of herping here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We have the final part of our Philippine series coming next week, and believe me, it is incredible. But in the meantime, make sure you did not miss last week's Philippines episode. It's a banger as well, and I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.